if you're trying to varnish something like a uh, a surface that's very bumpy and very you know a lot of a lot of holes in it and and texture, the 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 varnish will protect the surface only as far as you know keeping um, it keeping the surface of it dust free, but you can't really take that varnish off. It's just, you know, it'll take the they'll take the fiber paste off. It just isn't really meant for that, I don't think. I wasn't thinking of varnish. Oh, okay. Well, just in, in case you were, yeah. But but anything else, I mean, yeah, the answer is yes, you can do any of that stuff. It's not, you know, it won't uh it, it's it's just like an aesthetic choice, Sherry, if you wanted to put in something on top of it. Yeah. Does no, that answer your question? You needed to protect it. Because it's uneven. It's very uneven, and it's hard to protect it, uh, you know, really to the point that someone could take off that varnish and re-varnish re it. It's just, it doesn't, I don't, I think you have to just kind of hope that in the future, art conservators can, you know, fix up your painting should something happen to it if someone wanted to, you know, bring it back from being dirty or soot covered or whatever it is, you know? So that's my attitude anyway, because, you know, varnishing really changes the surface and things like watercolors, you don't really want to varnish it because it changes the look of the watercolor in the paper. You know, it just is, you really have to consider a lot of things when you talk about varnishing. Anyway, but Sherry, yes, to your point, anything can go on, a, on top of any one of the mediums we've been using. Okay, other question. Other general? I um, did a collage and it sort of uh, takes off on Sherry's question. Yeah. I, I used a um, GAC 100 yeah. as a fishing coat on a collage and it has the effect of sealing it. Yes. And there's a shine to it. Yeah. That normally. Uh, I've always wondered how artists make that happen. Now I know that how they make that happen. And um, I, I think it is like a, a beautiful finishing coat for some pieces. Yeah, so. yeah. And so, uh, and Mary, um, you know, uh, I, I'm hoping that everybody got a chance to peek at the attachment I sent last night that has the list of the, of the different mediums we've been using. Did everybody get a chance to do that? No, no I I haven't seen that, but okay, I will. Well, I'll, I'll actually bring it up. Um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, there, yeah. Let me let me actually do that right now because we're talking about something that really applies, which is it's not just GAC one hundred, but there are several other glossy mediums that you can use as well. So let me just share my screen here and get out my. Um, okay. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Seductive sir. All right. So actually, maybe this is a good time just to go through, but 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 what you're asking right now is this part here. To make a paint skin for collage or other applications, you'll want to use a clear, a clear drying glossy medium. GAC 100 is one, right? Uh -huh. Regular gloss medium is another one and also clear tar gel. So, you know, these are all gonna give you a nice glossy surface. And I, in, you know, if you have GAC 100 and there's no other reason that you need to get more, it's fine, you can use this. Um, the reason that there are these other ones is that there are, they, there's uh, maybe a little bit thicker, some of them, um, clear tar gel, does a very particular thing, which is that um, when you drip it from the end of your paintbrush or a stick or something like that, you get a kind of Jackson Pollock looking, um, uh, uh, what I want to use, a uh, dribble, which you can't really get with any of these other ones. So that's a case where if you made, if you, if you mixed clear tar gel with some other paint, a color, you'd get a nice drippy looking, you know, a te texture, which is something you, you, that you might want. But if you're not interested in doing anything special, except just getting a glossy look on your paint, in your painting, 
GAC 100 is fine. If you don't happen to have GAC 100 and you happen to have instead one of these other ones, you can you can use these other ones in place of GAC 100. But these are all pretty much um, similar and can be switched out for each other. Does that make sense? Uh huh. Yeah. And I I mean I know that this topic it's you know it gets very complex because you know there's not just one thing that does it you know. <laughs> But, you know, in, in the hopes of sort of clarifying all this, I'm throwing that in. Notice when you make a, a paint skin, a very little bit of paint to a very large amount of medium will give you a good color to make a paint skin from. And mediums are cheap. Paints or pigments are expensive. So if you want to save your paint for painting with, and but you still want to make paint skins, you can mix up a batch with a, just a very little bit of color in it and still get a nice, uh, you know, satisfying paint skin to use. Yeah. Okay, so um, everybody can see this all right? Is it, is it too small or? Mm -mm. No, oh, okay. good. All right, great. So, Let's, you know, what would be good is I'd like to go through this and just make sure that everybody understands. Because again, you know, we've been going through these things pretty quickly and these terms, medium, gel, blah, 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 it gets kind of confusing. First of all, what is an acrylic medium? And this is mostly what we've been dealing with. Anything you can add to your paint that changes them. So water can be a medium because it changes your paint, it makes your paint thinner, right? So a medium simply means something you can add to change your paint. You can make it grittier, you can make it glossier, you can make it matte, thicker, thinner. You know, there's all these different things and all of the things that we've been using in this class are mediums, even though we might call them fiber paste or light molding paste, we're leaving off the word medium, right? Fiber paste medium dries white light molding paste medium also dries white you know matte medium well that says it right in the uh the name of it but you know gac 100 medium regular gloss medium clear tar gel medium you know that's and 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 that's the thing that helped me understand all this when i was learning from golden you know i had to go through this all this training and it was so confusing so i really do empathize with you. But I, I couldn't understand what people were calling things gels, but not using the word medium. They were just being lazy. So if you have a gel, it, it, it usually means that it's jelly-like. We haven't really been using any gels in this class, but you know, you can you could get a matte gel medium and it will be stickier and mm. less runny. And you can certainly use that as well for any time that you want to um you know, glue things down, like soft gel matte medium is a great glue for, for example, for, for collage. Any questions with this stuff right now? Oh, with that one, okay. So are you sent, are, when it says clear tar gel, yeah. is that, does that mean it's totally clear? Yes, it dries, it will dry transparent and glossy. And are there, is that the only one that's clear? No, all of these are. GAC 100 is clear. Regular gloss medium is clear. These are all clear glossy mediums. Again, they'll all look white out of the container because that is the nature of this acrylic emulsion. You know, there's a lot of water, 50% water in it. And so what happens is, you know, the light is bouncing off the water molecules and it makes it look white. But when the water evaporates, that's when you're left with a nice glossy top. So fluid matte medium isn't clear. Fluid matte medium is not clear. That will dry translucent like wax, but it will not dry clear and glossy like GAC 100 or glossy medium okay. or clear tar gel. I'm trying to make a list of which yeah. ones are clear, which ones are transparent. Well, you'll have this in your email, uh, Betty. I, everybody has this printed, uh, just printed out. So you'll, yeah, 
Yeah, no, I have it. I was. Um, oh, you do. Okay, sure. I still don't understand it. <laughs> oh, so the. So you're saying the ones to make a paint skin are all clear. Yes. Remember, we made I made a mistake and I told you to make a paint skin using your matte medium and they many, many of them cracked. It's I should have remembered. I made a mistake. Matte medium is not great for making paint skins. It's just too brittle. The stuff hmm. that makes it, you know, look a little misty also makes things a little more brittle. So it's not a great thing to make a paint skin with. And we're not talking about paint skins are those things that you peel off, you know, remember, and then this is the this is my paint skin. All right. No, putting a, yeah, and putting a layer of the of the um medium uh the matte medium onto your acrylic and caustic pieces, it's a different thing. That's not making a um that's not making a separate um skin. That's something else. And we're putting it on that we're putting that on pretty thinly so you won't end up getting a a, a, a you know a brittle cracked surface. So those are the only three that are clear. Uh I'm gonna say yes. There are others, but you know they'll have the word, you know, th you know, thicker or thinner, you know, um, heavier, heavier, or whatever. But yeah, you can get gloss medium and various viscosities, but it's all the same. Yeah. So these are the three that you know will be glossy. You know for sure they will dry nice and glossy and clear. Okay. And those are great for making paint separate paint skins that you'll then cut up and, you know, uh, glue to something else or... Um, but you can also use like the GAC 100 to pour over it, right? Yes. Yes. So the, you can also use these to pour over, just as we were saying, using the matte medium to pour over something that's, you know, uh, a collage, for example, on a on a backboard, you know, on a on a on a separate surface. And that gives you kind of an encaustic look. If you use glossy, it, you know, it doesn't it doesn't look quite as much like wax. But if you just go over the whole thing with a with a matte medium, even at the very end, even if you've all all you've used was GAC 100 to build your layers, if you go mm -hmm. back at the very end with a layer of matte medium, it turns it all to matte. It will look matte, you know, from from looking at it head on. Yeah. And Adria, these mediums are interchangeable on the same piece, right? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Does yeah. get one hundred dry faster than the other than fluid or matte medium? Ah, uh, I'm going to say yes because I I think that. Uh, I don't think a lot thinner. I mean, I don't think a lot necessarily a lot faster. I think it has more to do with, you know, the temperature and the humidity in the air, uh, Ellen. So it it so it's not really a faster drying thing. It's not really that much faster. Not really. Okay. No. Now, why would I? How would I choose to make a faux wax layer between? pouring fluid matte medium or regular matte medium? Either one of those is fine. Like I said in here, the matte medium is just slightly, uh, it's a little bit thicker than the fluid matte medium. So is that harder to pour? No, because it's still fluid. It still comes out, you know, I'm so sorry about these names that it is very confusing. But both of them are fine, and and both of them, you know, nothing. Nowhere do you want to, you know, make a, a. If it's too thick, you will get uh, the the crazing. So right. you know, that's why we use that nice blade. You just kind of learn to make it. So the idea is to get it so that when you look at your piece while it's wet, you really can't see the imagery too well because it's very cloudy. 
And then most of that cloudiness will dry up once it's, it's dry. Um, but so, yeah, either, so either one of those is good. So what would the reasoning, do I have a reason to pour fluid rather than matte or matte rather than fluid? Uh, well, fluid, I think I've been using it because, you know, it is a little bit thinner. And so it's a little bit easier to get a thinner cover. So but it's a little easier to pour. A little easier to pour. Yeah, a little bit easier. That's the only reason. Yeah, yeah. Difference. If you happen to have matte medium in a Liquitex version, they won't say fluid, you know. But I mean, any brand, if you have a matte medium that's pourable, that you can use that instead of golden. Yeah, actually, matte medium, regular matte medium in Liquitex, yeah, flowier than golden. Yeah, great. So use that. And I think it might be cheaper. Yeah, it it very well may be. So yeah, that's that's also a good reason to say these two different ones because yeah, fluid matte medium is a a, a name that golden has. So like it's get gets confusing. Yeah, but if it's a fluid matte, you know, a fluid matte medium in any other brand, just you know, a, a matte medium that is pourable, that will work just the same way. Okay, and that might be a more economic choice, right? It could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, okay. absolutely. But I know that the regular matte medium in Liquitex is not good for collage glue because it is wetter. Uh huh. That's why I like the soft gel matte medium uh, okay. because it's it's not it's not so runny. Yeah, That's exactly. Why I like. I'm it. trying to figure out how to cut the cost. Yeah, you know, and like what's in Liquitex that translates because yep. Liquitex tends to be cheaper than Golden. Yep, yep, and some of the other brands too. And you know, Blix brand. There's a you know a lot of these house brands are are cheaper, and you can easily you know switch them out. The same thing goes for these you know the glossy mediums. You know, just get glossy medium, <laughs> horrible glossy medium from another brand. You don't need to worry about all this. This is just like yeah, what I hear stuff. you saying is, yeah, any glossy medium yeah. can, you can use to make a paint skip. Yes. And then you can use a matte medium yeah. to make a faux encaustic layer. That's right. Okay. That really simplifies things. Yeah. You need shiny for paint skin. You need yes. matte for faux encaustic. Yes. That helps me. I, okay. Sherry, I owe you an apology. No, 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 no worries. It's it's so confusing. It's you know really. No, I, I confused Sherry the other oh, day. Oh, Sherry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, <it's, laughs> I, I know. Think I know. So now, yeah. So now we 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 understand that matte medium was we've been using for the faux encaustic look because it looks more like wax when it dries. Okay. But I'm also saying that. You know, if you made a paint skin that you wanted to put put on top of one of your layers that happened to be glossy, don't worry because if it's sandwiched underneath or between, you know, layers that are are matte, matte, it won't it won't look glossy. You can always right. change the look of the glossy by adding a layer of matte. And if you want it to be glossy, put glossy over it. Exactly. If you want it to look glossy, yeah, there's nothing else else you need to do. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, anybody else have questions? Do people ever ever mix up? Since you know many of us are collage people, yeah. Mix mix up um, glossy and matte on the same piece to create uh -huh. in the same layer, yeah. so you end up with sort of a uh, let's say a piece, this is glossy, this is matte, and you get sort of a plaid effect. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And some people like, you know, uh, like to use the contrast between glossy and matte. I mean, here's just a little, you know, just imagine. So here I've got my glossy. It's so funny. This is still looking 
like matte medium, but it's not. It's just, again, it's that it's been so humid that this is still retaining water. <laughs> so yeah. it's glossy, but it really, it really is sort of, swear, swear to you, that came out of the bottle is glossy. Anyway, should you, is, you know, is there, yeah, sorry, want to do that, you know, see how nice, I mean, that's kind of an interesting look where the rest of it is matte, but that little area is glossy. That might be something that's right. kind of interesting to play with. So it also, all the stuff that we're doing here enhances the tactile and surface qualities of your painting. You know, oh. it makes uh, what you're doing with paint already, um, it, it, it gives it another dimension, you know, and, and that's what's really fun about it. And that's also what, you know, starts to really kind of uh, make your own work stand stand out um, because, you know, after a while you begin to understand what you might want to do with contrast in terms of, you know, glossy versus matte or layering or, you know, whatever you have. So it really just, it just opens the door to other possibilities. Would, would you ever mix like half matte medium with half gap 100? Sure. And then you get kind of a satiny look. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you would get satin look. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. You can certainly do that. All of these are intermixable. All of these, um, you know, just are very uh, stick to each other. So that's that's always very possible. Okay, and any questions about the fiber paste and the light molding paste? Oh, I forgot to add molding paste to this too. I'll do that. Um, and I'll, I'll send this back to everybody, but molding paste. Medium. Adria, were you ever able to um, uh, fix the last video of the third, third class? I have been trying to i it may not be possible i what happened was my folder for um videos that i've been keeping from zoom was uh over mm. over full and so it wouldn't it couldn't save it for me but i'm i'm going to i'm going to go back and try to do that tonight okay i i enjoyed that class so i yeah. love I you. know, I know. Me too. I was, I was so pummed. But yeah, I, the I, beginning I, of it. Yeah, I have so many of those those videos. That was, you know, yeah. I didn't realize that there was an end to the how many I could store on the computer. So I will try to revive that. So the and the molding paste dries um, uh, non-absorbent. So I have a question, Adrian. Yeah. yeah. Back up just a spec. If we, if one, if I pour fluid matte medium and it still has some hazy areas, it hasn't all dried. Right. And I pour something over it, will it keep the haziness? It depends. You know, again, this is the summer that yeah. we're running into. Um, it might, I don't know for sure. So we don't know if we can do a pour over something that isn't totally dry. It's probably not the best idea to do that. Okay. Yeah. You know. Like it just might do something funky in the end. It, it just may, you know. I mean, I know because I've done that, that exact thing when I was first playing with it, you know, and I had one that was cloudy for a year, but it did eventually clear up. <laughs> I mean, a year. it was, it was. <laughs> oh my God. So that's why, you know, we're, 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 all of this is a work in progress. All of this is, you know, an art, not a science. <laughs> so, you know, you can just give yourselves all a little bit of a, you know, leeway there to, <clears throat> uh, yeah, ex you know, experience some of these things that may or may not. Not, not a sure thing. Um, okay, so fiber paste, light molding paste, we know that those are both very absorbent, but also you can mix those into your paints 
and just paint with them. And they give your paints a little bit more body. You know, everybody, you know, has different approaches to that and different reasons why they might want to use it. But in our case for this class, we've been using these things as surfaces. So we're really focusing on the surfaces here and not all the ins and outs about actually painting with them. But as I said earlier here in this, in this first paragraph, um, they can be under your paints, which is how we've been mostly using them, mixed into your paints or painted on top of your dry paint, which is also the way we've been using them. So we've been focusing on, on top and under, but not as much mixed into your paints. But they're, you know, just, just to kind of cap it all off, acrylic mediums, um, you don't need them to paint, but there's a lot of reasons why you might want them, you know, and so. their, they, they extend your paint you know, you can have much more paint by adding any of these mediums. You can, you know, almost double the amount of paint you have. So that's that's also how you can save money. Like if you, you know, just in general are talking about not not necessarily with this topic we've been doing, um, mixing in, you know, uh, your glossy um, paint with with glossy medium to about half, half and half makes, you know, twice as much paint and you still have the same power, the same, you know, vibrancy with the colors. Well, that is cool. So, can you say something between high flow medium and color poor medium? Yes, and then I will get to Kimberly because she was next. Um, oh, okay. uh, no, that's okay. So high flow medium is designed to, when you mix it with any of your paints, whether it's heavy body, fluid or high flow will give you the consistency of high flow, which is to say very thin. Say that again. So there is a medium called high flow medium, which is again, clear, and it will look like, you know, it'll look white also in the container. And thank you, Kimberly, there, that's what it looks like. It, that's high flow medium, yeah. That you can add to any of your paints to get a very thin uh, viscosity. So you can add that to your paint to make a high flow. Paint. Yes, yes. And so there's, it looks like milk. It does look like milk. Yeah, that's again because it's it's light bouncing off the water molecules. So they tell me. <laughs> and is that can you put little bit of paint in that? I I've been using that instead of water. Yes. Yeah, and there's a difference. You know, water just kind of releases everything kind of splat, but the medium does keep the paint more consistent, you know, in, in the way that it actually comes out of the container. So could we make paint skins with it? You can, mixing it with the mediums, yeah, with a, with a glossy medium, yes, because, you know. Can you, can you just use high flow medium and a little bit of paint to make a paint skin? No, because the no. high flow medium is too thin. Too thin, it's okay. Way too thin. Yeah, that's why you want to stick with a fluid mat or the regular mat. I see, and the pouring color medium, which says it's matte, that would be too thin. So that's interesting. Yeah, that's a very new product that Golden has come out with. And Ellen, to be completely confusing to everybody, Supposedly, you should be able to pour paint skins with that stuff because they figured out how to, um, you know, keep it from being too brittle. I haven't tried it yet, so this is, you know, but so I should try and work. Work to make to add some color to that and see if it makes a paint skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So supposedly, you know, supposedly it's got more flexibility. You know, they've been, this is what paint companies do when they're busy at work. You know, they're they're trying to design things that will improve the artist's, uh, you know, ability to do stuff that they want to do. And one of the things has been, how do you get a matte paint skin? So this is their, this is one of the things that they've just, just come out with. I think it's like a year old now. So yeah, if you want to buy that, you can try it and experiment with it. Yeah, I happen to have some, so That's I'll great. try it. Yeah, try it. I'd love to know uh, your experiences. But yeah, I would say that you could probably use that as well in place of your fluid matte medium 
because it will probably act the same way uh, as you know on on top of your your pieces that you want the acrylic encaustic look for like that I color, say that again you can color probably... pouring medium that you have that is matte could probably be used in place of the fluid matte medium on your oh again it's really the same the difference is that with this fluid matte medium that you're the pouring the pouring medium is you have better results making a skin because it's you know it, it's they're working on it they're always working on making the stuff better so for what it's worth but uh, for for people who don't already have it unless you really really want to try it there's no need to go out and buy it really unless you you just you know I don't I don't want people to be spending money here and there all over the place but, but if you happen to have it right Ellen that's fine if you have the glossy pouring medium that's the same as the glossy medium okay are we totally confused all of us completely <laughs> Oh my God. I was in the store looking at GAC 100. Yeah. And then they had GAC 200 and 300. What, is, what are all? Yes. Oh my God, Betty. I know. Um, all right. GAC simply stands for golden acrylic colors. Uh -huh. And these are mixtures. They're basically the emulsions. In other words, it's, it's molecules of plastic floating around in water. Um, it's one of their earliest mediums, really, um, that Golden ever made. But we, you know, and they still sell it because it still is, you know, useful for a lot of other things. And um, each of the numbers suggests that that particular GAC is good for a very specific thing. So there is a GAC five hundred, I think, that you can add to your paint colors and paint on fabric with. So your uh, your paints will be thinner and they will stay on fabric and you can wash your fabric, huh. uh, right? And um, number 800 is good to prevent crazing, which we all know what crazing is. But again, that was before they came out with the color pouring medium, which is very new and also prevents crazing. So, you know, yeah, I could go over each one of those things, but they all do very specific things. And you can always go to the Golden website to find out what each specific thing. So here's something that's kind of interesting. Number, I think it's number 400 is a great medium if you want to sculpt with fabric. So if, suppose you have a piece of canvas or cotton muslin and you want the fabric to hold a form or to come out of your you know, whatever you're painting, you want you want three dimensionality, you want a twister or something like that. You can buy this GAC 400, dunk your piece of material really well, saturate it with this material and then form it. You know, sometimes you need something underneath it to form it. Suppose you wanted to make a bowl or you wanted to, you know, right. make, yeah, whatever. So form it, keep it in place, let it dry thoroughly and you will have a completely you know, sort of plasticized piece of fabric. <laughs> so you could almost do like a paper mache. Yeah. Thingamajig. You could. So you'd have to, if you put it on a form, you'd have to have some plastic on the form so it would peel off. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Or just use a form that it won't stick to, like nothing with paper. But, um, you know, suppose you wanted, I don't know, like a dumbbell. <laughs> Work on, you know, it won't stick to this. Anything that it can release it from. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing. I have actually played with it a bit. Um, and I've used it in some of my 3D sculptures. Uh, I would say that it's, you know, it's expensive. That's the problem. And I think for, you know, to me, it, it's always a, about like, what is, what is the right, material to use for what you want to do you know like if you want a three-dimensional surface that looks like paper mache you should probably just use paper mache it's a lot cheaper and just use like you know elmer's glue and water i mean and it works fine but 
you want a plastic looking bowl that you've used fabric. Yeah. Oh, you know, so, I mean, it's, you know, th these are, again, these are, these are products that were made very specifically for artists who asked for, you know, hey, can you make me something that does X? And so they made them and then Golden then says, oh, you know, there might be other people who are interested in buying this. So they put a label on it and sell it. Um, but, you know, they, that, that is, that's a very specific use. You know, I, uh, you know, you can also dunk like good quality printmaking paper in a, a, a container of GAC 100, 500 and, and then mold, form it. Wow. You know, and you'll also get like a 3D sculptural thing made out of paper. Is that the best use of the paper? Is that the best use? You know, it just, again, it really depends on what you're looking for. And that comes from trial and error in the studio practice. Right. Patty, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. So the 100 is a good all purpose, you know, glossy medium, spine. You can add it to your paints, whatever, whatever. You know, then the difference might be if you wanted to use something that was more gel like and, and you were able to, um, you know, create thicker paint with it or make a thicker, more um, uh, sculpted surface, you know, the way that, uh, you know, fabric paste can do that or, or the light molding paste can do that too. Right. Okay. So I'm not going to think about those. Adrian, can I go back to the gloss versus matte thing for just a second? Sure. Um, so, so far, my experience with the gloss is that it makes the colors of the paint more vibrant. Yeah. And gets into the matte. Mm -hmm. And I'm building up the layers. And I guess I, you know, what I'm trying to do is get a shortcut by getting you to give me the answer instead of doing it myself. Yeah, okay, I'll try. But you know, like if I were to set this as, up as an experiment, I would do glossy, 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 glossy layer, layer. So maybe I have five layers of gloss over here, and over here I would do glossy, 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 and then one layer of matte. Yeah. And so the question I have is, in or does does that one does that one layer take that glossiness away? Yes. Right. It does. Yeah. But does it take the saturation that the gloss brings up away instead, or if I just had only matte and I just did matte, 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 matte. Right, right. Yes. You see I, what I'm I, saying? It's, yeah. I mean, I think when you're using layers of matte medium over and over again, um, you know, there's, it's, it's, uh, going to maybe give you a little bit more, but you know, of all the years that I was doing it, and I did do a lot of this piece, this particular process over and over again, mm -hmm. and big pieces. And I wouldn't say that it ever was cloudy. Again, you know, that's, that's right. Okay. That stuff dried out. I, I don't think it really does, you know, make it so like, oh my God, I can't see the layer because all of it's so matte now. You know, right. it, I just wonder if there was the best practices in that you know, going all matte, 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 yeah. or glossy, 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 matte. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wondered. Yeah. yeah so it sounds like, yeah, I, I should set the experiment up myself. And then the other question yeah. I had was, um, you know, in this pile of weird little white bottles over in my corner, I have this thing, since we're talking about other things that are crazy and confusing, clear leveling gel. It also yeah. looks clearish yeah it looks so much like matte medium and yet it's a gel yeah Did, what's up with that <laughs> why do i have oh, it yeah no it's another just nice glossy uh medium could what make skins for and, making and, skins yeah yes for making skins and it should sort of self level i think when you pour it on it should over time right. kind of just self level like instead of having to spread it so much it'll just you know, yeah, it's supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, I was, you know, when I went over to get the, I don't know, one of the many bottles that I've been walking around with, I saw it and I was like, ooh, I should ask about this. Thick yeah. fluid acrylic medium. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, did we, so the answer to matte, 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 yeah. no, versus 
floss, gloss, gloss, math. Yeah. We don't know. I would say from my experience that it's probably about the same. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna see a big giant difference between one or the other. Is it gonna give you that feeling of one floating yeah. on top of the other? Oh yes, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Because you know, that that the thing that happens is really the slight shadow underneath the layers of paint you know the shadow is cast and that's what it looks that's why it looks like it's you know in, in in there so it doesn't matter if it's matte or glossy like we were saying you can save yourself time by making glossy uh skins and you know doing something to them and then just stacking them one on top of the other you know if you wanted to do it quickly and you don't want to wait in between to do all this stuff you could do that you know and um Let's see, fluid matte medium. Don't use that for skin. Right, do not use it for skin. Anything with matte, I would stay away from because we saw it was not great. Okay. It's not great for me anyway. I think somebody had an okay experience with it, but I did not. Probably because my matte medium was old, older. And you know it's a, it's when what happens is when it's older, the water has evaporated away, and so you're left with more of those matting agents in there, you know, and so then it gets much more likely to get brittle and craze and break apart. But okay, anybody here have a good up good outcome with their matte medium when they try to make a skin? Somebody did. Yeah, I. You didn't have a bad time. With them, where are they? And some of them were cool. I mean, um, well, I didn't know enough to mix the paint um, well. But oh, yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So that's good. That's good. You ended up with a good one, probably because you're, you know, it may be that you had a, I don't know why. You just, you, you, you had a good outcome with that. That's so great. that that's the side that was on the plastic. And you yeah. can see. The side that wasn't on the plastic has all kinds of weirdness. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks like a little crazy, you know, a crazy yeah. area. Yeah, so that is that is fairly typical. But, okay. you know, the thing is, is it wrong? No, it's just, it is what it is. And if you're doing something where that didn't matter, it didn't have to be perfect, you didn't feel like, you know, you wanted that or that it was perfectly fine, it's a really interesting organic kind of look to it. It could be cool. So just depends on what you're going for, right? I made this with, oh, nuts, something stuck to it. I made this one with fluid. Yeah, nice. It worked uh -huh. okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's a great one. That's a great skin. Yeah, be careful to not have them stick to each other. That is. Um, yeah, except something stuck to it. Um, And. This one didn't come out so bad. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's a wonderful one. Yeah. And and that you could make into a stencil too, because that would be also really interesting to stencil to make oh, yeah. to use it as a stencil. Even okay. as a jelly plate stencil or just as a paint stencil. Uh-huh. Cool. And I think what you're beginning to see, Alan, and, and everybody here is that, you know, um, the material that we're working with has its own interesting look to it. And it can give you effects that you just can't get any other way, you know, which is the reason to, to experiment with this stuff. It can kind of push your, your painting in or collage or whatever you're doing could, you know, put, push you in ways that you might never have tried before. Yeah. And right. also give you ideas and maybe, you know, some of the happy accidents that happen end up being things that really, you know, get you excited in the studio too. Right? Yeah, look at your little I, yellow one. I know. Some of, the, some of the colors, I think, mix better than other colors. Could be, yep. Could be. And the other thing that's kind of fun to do is uh, to, to, you know, pour out uh your your glossy medium on a on a page protector for a skin and then drop pigment into it oh really don't even try to make it all the same and you get some really interesting effects that way too drop fluid paint into it absolute paint or high flow even 
and you know it'll disperse out and you know give you this sort of interesting like um you know dot expanding dot look kind of like a little galaxy <laughs> so it just goes on and on there's really no end to the experimentation and you know the good thing is that you know all of these products are compatible and you know you're not going to do anything with these products that will um be faulty in other words they're not going to fall off of a back backing they're not going to crack off unless it's crackle paste or unless you know you've done something with that medium you shouldn't have done <laughs> but mostly mostly you can fix things and mostly you know you're you're going to be uh, pretty good to go you know i i did want to show you um i don't think i i really spent any time talking about this one thing but uh let me let me do this too let me just show you a really quick demo on the table here so let me just get this and uh all right so here is you know again this is my glossy this is this is an example of the, that glossy skin that hasn't dried thoroughly and part of the problem is because i think it was a little bit too thick although it came out really well like it's a really good paint skin and if this were winter, I would have no problem with it, but it's just still retaining the moisture. And I know that eventually this will clear clear up, So, but I'm not too worried about it. But here's, you know, an interesting thing that you can do, which is really, you know, quite fun, is to use it to uh, to draw with. So, you know, you can, you can take a, a, an image or a picture or, you know, anything, a drawing that you've already done, and you can take a you know, one of your drawing implements. This is that um, high flow in a in a paints in a um, a uh, paint marker, right? And I'm using this to you know help me draw mm -hmm. or give me an I you know give me something to use. Um, and I could paint it. You know, I could do a lot of different things to it. Um, I could add you know stuff to it all the time and then you know you have this thing and then what happens is you can take it and then put it down on top of you know your painting and see where you like it so that gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility i think you know could be flowers could be you know part of a landscape could be you know maybe and and this is also where you you could um do that the acrylic transfer like you had a black and white image you know when you, an old wood engraving you know or an old black and white you know picture that you wanted to use someplace you know on this and then you could just move it around and decide where you wanted to put it so i think you know that's another really exciting thing to do um gives you again a, a lot of flexibility or suppose you know you're just looking at your picture you're saying you know what it really needs something i don't know what it needs uh maybe it needs some yellow transparency oh okay so take your page take your your skin or make a yellow skin or or take a skin and paint it yellow you know and then move it around and then you can see and then if you like it you just glue it down and not only that but you've got a really interesting shape that you might not have come up with any other way so i think that's another really fun thing you can do with with your skins all right how, do, how are we feeling are we feeling a little more like clear. <laughs> I have a question, Adria. Yeah. Has Golden put out any information about um, these products and health? Is there yes. any? Okay. What what's what's the story? Yes. Well, let me share the screen with you. I was going to ask that question, Mary. Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Um, so they have. This is what I understood was that. You know, they keep talking about all these microplastics that are in the water and you never be able to get them out, uh -huh. like ocean and stuff like that. Yeah. Is, that, well, is what we're working with contributing to that? Well, no, it's a good question. So here, I mean, they are very, they try to be as transparent about that as possible. So, um. This is what is on their website. 
you know, and you can you can look at all these different things. They talk about how to dispose all dispose your stuff safely, how they reclaim water, how you can as an artist reclaim your water. I think it's less worrisome if you live in a city, but if you have a septic tank, I would definitely think about, you know, using a way to um, separate the acrylic solids from the water. Um, I would say that you're, we're, you know what? I mean, it is, it's a hard question, Betty, and, and I hear you. I, I also, you know, feel alternately guilty, but then like, uh, without acrylic, how would I do my work? Um, oil paint still has, it's also, you know, and everything has, everything has, pro everything has possible problems with it, except for maybe charcoal, which is the only art supply you could probably eat and survive, you know, but <laughs> it is a real challenge. And, you know, the pigments present some dangers, plastic, certainly, um, I don't know about the effect on the environment. I do know that these guys are conscious of trying to make their product as environmentally friendly as possible. If you compare it to larger industries that are using this stuff wholesale and not caring at all what happens with it, I think you know an, an individual artist is probably okay. I just think it's something we each have to kind of come to grips with on our own and do our own research about it. You know, at this point in my career, I don't want to start over again. I like what I'm doing. I'm really having fun with it. Um, I rely on the acrylics. I could probably change over. I could probably use tempera. I could probably go to... Um, Making so one paint out of... Yeah, you can, you know, all that stuff is possible. And there's certainly artists who have decided to do that. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm sorry I can't give you any clarity on that, but I think it's it is really it's a real question. But you would put the um gels and the paste and the things we've been talking about during class in the same camp as uh acrylic paints. Yes. Not worse no or... no, no because it's it's acrylic emulsion and you know what happens with that is that you know you can separate out there is a, a formula that actually golden well there's there's a product now that you can buy but you you could also do it yourself you, you mix um uh alum and uh, um oh gosh something i have i have the i have the recipe and i'll send it to you mix alum and something else with with the with the acrylic paint water and in a day you'll see the paint solids drop to the bottom of the container and you're left on the top with like pretty much clear water which you can just pour off so you pour off the water and you hold on to the paint solids and you uh get rid of the paint solids in the solid waste uh you know way to get rid of your yeah, paint. I, I think they sell a whole kit yeah they that do. you lose yeah, that you do that with like yeah. it's called like crash with, like with oil paint you let the yeah. solid sink yeah it's yeah, yeah it's just the way I think so yes you can get solid acrylic they'll fall to the bottom of the container yeah so and I used to, I have done that I did that in the studio for a long time um not using such big quantities of paint that much much anymore so I am okay about letting it go down this the, the the regular city sewer Again, I don't think that that's going to be so bad, but you have to make your own decisions about it, you know, okay. just think about it. And in terms of um, cancer causing additives to any paint, well, Golden uses California as its standard. So if something, so if some chemical or some product is banned in California, which has the highest, um, you know, consideration of what's considered dangerous than any other state in the country. In other words, you know, they're super, super concerned about it. They will put a label on it saying, you know, this, pro this, you know, this product in this material that you're using, you know, has something in it that was banned in California. 
and you know you can decide to use it or not right. so yeah <laughs> i know it's a quandary for everybody yeah, I just picked up a little thing I have of golden iridescent gold. Yeah. It says right on it, may produce allergic reaction. Mm. So there's a warning right oh. on here. Yeah. So well, I don't know. That, that I would, yeah, I would call their helpline and just ask them what is in it that you know, causes that. And then, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what that would be, but they're, you know, all of them are different and some of them have nothing on them. And some of them, you know, some of them are, are just, they're just fine. Yeah. It, it looks like I picked up another one. It's something called a BIT, blah, 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 may produce an allergic reaction. Hmm. That's on this one too. Okay. Yeah. So I, yeah. I don't know what that is, but anyway. Right. Right, right. All right. Oh, it says right on here. This okay. product contains a chemical known to the state of California to cause yeah. cancer. Yeah, yeah. And so, I've got a big bottle of it. Yeah. And I'm not going to swallow it. That's right. You know, you're not going to, you, you can you can wear gloves on your hands. You can, you know, just not eat and drink in the same area as you're painting. You just be very careful to be to use it as directed. I've started using gloves. Yeah. 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 I, I'm I'm thinking of going that route. Yeah. Gloves are always good. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, all right. It's two. What I'd love to do is to look at what we've been doing, and then, or shall we do this? Shall we work for a while? Then I chat with each one of you, and then for the last hour of our class. We look at what everybody's been doing. Does that make more sense, maybe? Yeah? Okay. Does that sound good to everybody? Sherry, what do you say? I'm ready to meet. I'm sorry. Did you say it was okay with you? I'm ready to meet. You're ready to meet. Okay. Um, I'm going to go down to my studio and... Okay. Oh, so, so for our one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. So let's do this. Yes, let's for the next hour, I just chat with each one of you separately, like 10, 15 minutes, whatever it takes, you know, less than uh, get around to everybody. And then um, at three o'clock, we'll stop or so. And then we'll look at the work that we've done at Padlet and all that stuff. Sound good? Okay. All right, Sherry, I will meet with you in a second. I'm going to give you a special um uh invitation to meet in a separate room we didn't do that last week because you know it was, was hard but just look for it and just click on it when you see it okay on your zoom all right everybody so go ahead and play 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 i'm going to be disappearing into a little room i'll send out the invite when i'm ready and uh yeah <laughs> bye <laughs>
I was just going to say, I, I, I messed up, Sherry. Let's try it again, okay? I, I pressed the wrong button and I put you back to the main. Hi, Katie. I'm going to do one-on-ones with everybody right now. I can't hear you. You're muted. What if I sign in later then? Yeah. Why don't you sign in at three? We'll be ready to to, to get together then. Okay, okay good. Bye. Thanks. All right. Yeah. All right, Sherry, I'm going to try this one more time. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all right, break out my own. So. Hi Sherry, um, did you did you click the the uh, the room to to get into it? Okay. No, you you want to um uh you know and it, there should be an invite to join me in this this uh, breakout room one on your screen. Okay, no, that's that's not right. Um, okay, it looks like you're actually. It's interesting. It looks like you joined, but I don't see you. Um, hmm. No. Uh, yeah, that's weird. Well, um, all right. Let's try this. Uh how about before though? You clicked something that I was able to see you. Well, you know what? <laughs> oh dear. That's that's correct. Let's see. Why can't I see you? I wonder why. Oh my goodness. Well, if we meet one on one just back in the regular classroom, will that be okay? Because we can do that too. It's just a matter of keeping it quiet for everybody else. But we can do like we, we did last week was just to meet in the regular room. All right, let me, I'm going to get out of the breakout room and then I'll join you in um, talking with you at, uh, in the big room. Okay, see you soon. Okay, Sh Sherry, um, we are ready. everybody okay so we're going to go back to our share screen um okay let's see i'm going to go back and um let me see here nancy i was going to just pull out one of those that you were talking about we were just talking about them um where were they where were they up farther up farther yeah yeah okay uh, I know that's one of them, but wait, where is the? No, this, oh, there we one. go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so so this one, I think you had a really interesting talk about that. Um, yeah, so I had 
uh, done some acrylic and, a, and water based inks on a big sheet getting ready to do a collage. So then what I uh, and did a little painting and then what I was discovering is when I did a pour of the fluid matte medium as I moved the paper around, I got some really interesting shapes and the fluid matte medium interacted with the ink and made some interesting things happen um, in both the blues and in the pink. Um, so I'm interested in trying that a bit more and also thinking about um, testing that white resist stuff you use in watercolor, if that would work and you'd have this interplay between the resist and the fluid matte medium um, with colors. So, um, and you can see down in the deep teal on the right that the fluid matte medium on the right made the colors change. And I thought that was fun. Super interesting. This is just yeah. a beautiful little area. You know, all these things are, here's Katie. Yeah. Um, you know, I as you were speaking, I just uh, got to kind of underline that I love how what's happening, I think for, and I think this is starting to happen for a number of you is you are going to figure out what you need to use to get certain effects. And that is the painting process. That is exactly what everybody who, you know, does this stuff does eventually need to do. Figure out how you need to use your materials to get the kind of looks that you're looking for. And it, you know, sometimes it happens when you change materials, um, you try something new. You know, this experimentation though cannot be beat. And you know, you'll discover something that just thrills you. And you know, gives you ideas for more work. So I think um, I love that. That's that's sort of happening to you for um, here, uh, Nancy. That's great. Good. Um, any questions for Nancy? Yeah, so Nancy, that? you're saying that the pores were on top of watercolor stuff. It was acrylic and water-based ink. Okay, and so the pores interacted with the water-based ink in the yes. way yes yeah and um I, yeah i hadn't expected that and was quite intrigued by it so i wasn't going for an even pour i was going for the shapes mm -hmm. you know as you move the paper around mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah i had that happen on a water-based thing when i did a pour how it bled yeah. right yeah. yes yeah. But yeah, this is a, yeah. So I thought it could be fun to experiment with. You know, the yeah. other thing it might be fun to do too is, um, you know, put down some of the medium and then dribble in some of that water-based. Yeah. Into it. And, and dribble know, what? And That's... dribble what? Dribble the water-based uh, inks into oh. the wet medium and see what happens. Ooh. On, 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 what's the surface here? This, I'm just trying to catch up. Oh, hi, Katie. It's paper. Yep. This is paper. paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all these all these uh, intriguing new ideas are are happening, popping out, you know, and you're you're all kind of kind of coming up with your own little formulas. Okay. Anybody else? Question. All right. This is this is pretty intriguing. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's can see. I ask a question? Is this, I love this. Is this the pour was the was the ink a pour or the pour the black design that's in here the the ink was painted on but do you see where it looks like things are running mm -hmm. like drips are running yeah yes yeah yes so yes. that's the pour where yeah. I used the fluid matte medium on top and you know did this to get it to run around that's super what nice. medium what medium did you use fluid matte medium did you mix it with the medium did you say no it's fluid oh. matte medium 
Yeah, but there are little. <laughs> I know we don't have time to get into all the. the okay, fine. Yeah, the, the special, I, this is but great. Yeah. But you know, Katie, the takeaway of all of this is, when you play around, you're going to discover stuff that you did not know, and that could really be really fun. You know, um, to to be playing with here. Uh, let's see. Very cool. This is an interesting one here. Um, Sherry. Oh wait. Oh wait. We started with Sherry. Okay, hold on. And um. Oh, okay. Uh, Kimberly, let me see. We want one, one with you. Do you have one up here? No, though? I don't no. have any up there. I'm okay. sorry. That's Not right. this time. Well, but this is always a good one to go back to because I think this, you know, this is a nice, now maybe everybody understands this one a little bit better even today. And here you've gone over your um, stencil. I think the way we were talking, Ellen, you could go over your stencil and have it be less mm. uh, high from the rest of the surface if you you know pour more medium over it but here's we yeah have it, it. it softened softened the edges of my stencil and made them more um velvety ah, yep and you're you also using the white dots the way mary was and it's fun how they seem to hover above everything yeah. yes you know, so that's again that is the quality that you can get with this layers layering of the of the mediums and um, it's just an, a wonderful kind of an illusionary effect that you know, mm -hmm. yeah. How did you do the gold lines on the left? I did them in one of the layers um, and they, I use a pen touch, a uh, pen touch called gold pen. It oh, comes yeah. in a set and that, I just really like that gold, that particular shade of gold. <laughs> It's gorgeous and it really, it really glimmers, really uh, gives yeah. you a shiny look. What's the pen called? Yeah, what's the called? What's the pen? Oh, pen uh, brand? It's a pen touch is the brand uh, gold metal pen and it comes with a silver and a copper and a gold. And it's made by Sakura, I guess. Mm -hmm. S-A-K-U-R-A. Oh, Sakura, huh? Yeah, and I've tried other ones, um, and I haven't liked them as well. I, I went on this, you know me, I go on these hunts, and I'm like, oh, well, I don't like the pilot one at all. Yeah. Um, and then um, the pen touch one has a couple of different kinds of, cert of tips. It has a calligraphy one, which is just a different a di different nature of line than from the round tip one. Yeah. That's all. It makes, makes square it's lines. Like Really, it's like metal. Yeah, it's a real, that's a yeah. real one. Yeah. When I first looked at it, it looked like it was almost incised into it. Oh, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's a quality that I'm trying to, to learn to do now with this acrylic and not have to use encaustic. Right. Yeah. Uh, you there almost got right. the gold leaf, gold leaf look to it. Yeah, so, you know. definitely. Have you ever cut into it, Adrian? And I have not, but I know another way of working with it's cold wax mixed in with acrylic paint. That's no, another whole class. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that you can incise into. Did you fill in. What? When are you doing that class? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll offer that this fall. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a fun, that's a fun one too. But yeah, there, there, there's all kinds of ways to play with this stuff that just kind of never ends. Um, okay, let's see, Katie, let's find one that, one of your new ones. Um, uh, let's see. I finished up, I did one? some, I did some of the, uh, played around with the, uh, soft absorbent mediums yeah and I also did some more with the um encaustic encaustic look stuff okay well we're just done you know i'm trying to pick out one piece i'm just you yeah. know picking one that yeah. looks like um we yeah. haven't talked about yet but yeah, uh, yeah now you finished this one tell yep. us a bit about how this was done so um i just kind of i had put a you know a, did a bunch of different surfaces and I just kind of picked, you know, I just wanted to play around with the absorbent ones. And this one, I just 
that the detail of the bumps that were happened to be in it. And um, I played around with the top and the sky, and then I did the bottom, and it started looking like kind of like the earth rotating yeah. around. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so I just kind of it was playing around with that. You know what I really liked that I'd like to try is that that metal metal board and how you use the different you there was an absorbent ground underneath yeah, yeah. but you went in with different like cutouts and shapes yes yeah, positive and negative yeah. stencils and stuff yeah and um so i think i'd like to explore that a little but i just you know i i played around like with some of the other ones i i played around with some of the gritty um uh surfaces yeah with some of the some of the rougher surfaces there's another one i did uh that i worked with the um fiber paste mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i just dripped the color and all of a sudden i saw uh, i saw this woman dancing in and it's this summer, and i just kind of used some splashes of white lines with that fine fine pen yeah and just played around with that but I'd like to experiment a little bit more and I like the idea of layering so it's just you know it's having more time to play around I guess there's, with all this there's stuff. a lot there's a lot to play around with here absolutely yeah, yeah I mean I yeah. know I, I've given you guys enough stuff to keep you busy for a year yeah probably. for a while yeah but I, I do think that um, the way you're you're using color you know very expressively in here and this is the path this this attests to the power of those pigments. They are so strong. Oh my gosh. That, really? Yeah. And you know, you actually can run your board underwater. If you feel like it got a little too strong, just run it. Oh, under. really? Yeah. Ooh. Yep. While it's wet, you know, oh. you should, yeah, you should get, get and it will mute them down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's um, really a beautiful use of that. And you know, what I, what I think is interesting here is, using the way that the material was just kind of, um, yes. right. uh, you know, uh, laid yep. on there with, and you didn't have yep. anything in mind. Really, nope. um, Nothing. Can, yeah, can sort of direct, you know, what you want to do with it. So that's, that's really a fun one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay. Um, so I have a quick question. Oh, on yeah, the sure. one that you showed us on the metal, was that all, like the hole underneath was an absorbent ground? Yeah. And it's still, so it was bumpy, right? Even though you that used those was, stencils over it? No, that one, I, did, I did that with something called, it's just regular absorbent ground. It's very thin. It's it's not a, um, it's not it's dimensional, not, you know? Yeah, but uh, it's, 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 it is similar in that it, it makes the surface absorb water. But yeah. That's, so maybe what I should have, what I should do if I want to do that is just use the, um, use the molding paste. Yeah, just use a, a or soft even molding. a flat surface, soft even molding a... paste. Yeah, soft molding paste. Oh, that's really? Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. the absorbent one. Yeah, and that will give you the same effect. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Too many, too many things. Um, let me see. Uh, we're looking for. Oh yeah. Um, Betty, where's? I didn't put anything. You didn't put up. Yeah. I did okay. play castle on inside. Okay. I tried to, but I couldn't do it while you were doing. Yeah, that. no, no worries, no worries. Do you want to um? Do you want to put it up now, and I'll go to somebody else? You should be able to put it yeah. up on this Padlet. You want to try? I'll try. Okay. And um. Oh wait, Betty. Oh, how about this one? This was this was such an interesting one. Is this? We looked at this last week, though. Right, I've added to it since then. Okay, you add. Yeah, see if you can put that. See if you can put that one up. That would be great. And mm. uh oh, who who oh. have I not? Who have I not talked about? We talk about everybody. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Um, go ahead, Betty. Clip. See, see if you can put that up, and then we'll we'll chat with you. Um. Who is this on green? Have you talked about that one? Which one? Which one? The one that was just up on the screen. Oh, that oh. was that Betty's? That yeah, was that's just Betty. She screen? she worked on that more, so she's gonna I think um gonna upload that one. 
Um, but anyway, why no, can't we just? Do you want me just to just show? I can just show it. Okay. Or well, here. Yeah. Okay. Can't. Go ahead. Um, just, just hold it up, it. and I'll put you on pin. Okay. Now I'm about to. Oh. Well, I have. Yeah, great. And and that one, we were we were shy on that a little bit because I think it's a great one to uh, see how um, you know Betty's left area. I'm not seeing it. Oh, you're not. You no. have to pin her. Yeah, you have pin her. Yeah, pin her up. Up in the right hand corner, you'll you'll go over to those little blue dots. Little blue dots. Just um, bring press on that, and you'll make it bigger. You see it now? No, I'm on an iPad. Ah, uh, it might not work, Nancy. But um, okay. Anyway, all right. Now I see her. Oh, now you see. Okay. okay. All right. So she's got smaller elements that allow for being able to see to the other areas beneath. So you can see the layering happen. Um, and I think that's a great example of that. Plus, you know, you, you have that push and pull spatially where the things that are darker uh, appear closer to us than the things that are more muted because they've got more layers on them. So I think that's what we all love about the encaustic process. And that's what you get here. It's very effective, um, Betty. Now, it looks like you also have a nice way of handling the paint where it's you're using very transparent paint colors. So it is also allowing the light to come through. You wanted to see this one. Not that you have to. It's just yeah, that that's the other one that shows that up better. Yeah, and this is um, you're you're stenciling oh. Oh. transparent colors. Can you see? It? Beautiful. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And was that was that a print originally, or did you do that on a hard surface? Did I? Did you, the the original one? Oh, wow. Yeah, she just used cool. a stencil instead of on a jelly plate. She just put it right on the piece of wood and then still painted so, the colors on top. So you printed it on paper and then put the paper on the board? No. No, no she just put it on the board. You did it the on stencil. the board. Yeah, take the stencil and put it directly on the board, uh, Katie, and then paint over it. And then you lift wow. up your stencil and you've got lovely shapes underneath so that's another really great suggestion wow. hopefully as we've been looking today there are ideas here that different people have done and i love the variety that we've we've seen here it's amazing you know we've had and people are working in every every one of the things that we we talked about so um that makes me happy <laughs> right um i okay i'm going to um go back to let's see what um can i can i ask a quick question Please, Betty, yes. will you put those Will you upload those? Because I couldn't see them very well, but I'd love love to look at them closely. So will you add them to the uh, Padlet eventually? Yes, I will. Yeah, please do that. So, yeah, them great. I really, I really like those, both of them. I thought that was. Yeah, um, no, and everybody's got such great ways. So you use, and, and you use the encaustic, you use the encaustic over both of those? I okay. use the max. The medium over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I did three different prints. I printed it three times. Yeah, that's that is that's a really good mm -hmm. idea. And yeah, you know, the other thing that I've I've thought about was uh, using a jelly plate print and just gluing that down first. If you right needed something, yes. To you. But then that gets us into that issue of being almost you know, if you have something like that and there's really nothing you want to add to it it sort of begs the question, why would why? you do that, you know? But if you do have the layers in between like Betty's doing, then it, it does make a more sense. Um, or you can simply, you know, have your, your collage or your painting or whatever underneath and then put a thicker layer on top and it encases everything, it protects everything. Yeah, Kimberly, that's a beauty. Here, what, show that up a little bit. Let me let me make you, this big for everybody you here. Can see, you can see the other one on, on the padlet before I added this the the last layer. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Is it there now? But just to go back to Kimberly, um, that uh, you're you're muted, Kimberly. But was that um, it's a jelly plate. Ah, it's a, can you see the double? It's like a yes, double yes, yes. print. Yes. And then I did what you said. I glued it to the white piece of paper, and then yes. I was like, oh, it's it's not the same size. I'll add something else. Yeah. Right. And then I put the, you know, after we talked, I put some of the clear leveling gel on it. Yeah. Here, this one. Yeah. Because I don't have any gloss left. And just to create a new space, a new depth. Yep. And then my plan is to go back into it and work on it some more and add another layer and another layer. Yes. But it was really fun to start with just the jelly plate. Yeah. Although now I'm like, well, why didn't I just print on the wood like Betty did? You but you know what? Because I used a ghost print, yeah. I think it's probably, and that helped me get some extra lines that were more, I keep looking over here like that's the camera, you're here. Yeah. Some extra lines that were able to um, to speak to that layering yes. that I'm interested in. No, you're absolutely right. And I think that print you used has is a great way to start one because it isn't too completed yet. You know, that have, there's room for overlays and it'll be great, yeah. Yeah, so I think either one, either one is 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 just fine for sure. Um, all right, so we're we're heading to the ending here, and I wonder, um, just kind of uh, to and Kat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send everybody a short video on how to do transfer, uh, so that it's much more um, reliable. It's not one you try to do instantly. That's really hard to do. So uh, there's one where we flip the um, image with, you know, on, on the paper right over onto wet medium and let it sit overnight, let it really dry. And then you spray the back of it with water and peel off the paper. That way you get a very good, clear uh, result. The other way it's, you know, a little, little iffy. Where, where do you get the graphic images from? What, oh, what? well, I have a wonderful book um, that is um, old wood engravings, but they're small. So what I did was I photocopied them and then I enlarged them. And I love, you know, working much more with the, the enlarged shapes. So um, I will, if I can find those, I'll send them to everybody and then you can play around with those too. But yeah, that's where I get them. I haven't had much luck on Google Images. They just don't seem to have really good ones. I found a bunch of stuff. Have um, you? Not Google yeah. Images, but if you Google, um, um, I wish I could remember what when I found the last one, like free clip art. Yeah, free clip art. Sometimes I do. And and say you know like um but, so the tm and some of it look for when you look for a positive no tan search for no tan no tan no tan is another black yeah. and white yeah um yeah black and white and o t a n yeah so anyway yeah. yeah you can do a little research and find what you're what you're interested in in finding and you can probably find it or just go to the library <laughs> one of these books dover makes a great bunch of you know visual, visual images yes. uh, to you so um all right well everybody this has been great i'm so excited to see what you all did i vicariously like, enjoy and learn from each one of you every time i teach this class i know it was a lot and you know i would i would love to you know anyway i hope that if it was confusing at the beginning, we sort of worked out some of the kinks and you're you're able to, you know, you, you have a better grasp of it. But, you know, it's not you, it's the material is very complicated and it's all this new stuff and they all do different things. Um, I think maybe next time I teach this, I won't teach two different absorbent grounds. I'll just teach one absorbent ground. Maybe that, <laughs> a little easier, <laughs> you know. That's, yeah. That's always like challenges. But oh, I want them to see this, and then this is so cool. And what about this? Yeah. And it just is a lot. Yeah, but the molding it, paste does such a great, amazing job with the texture and the pattern yeah. stuff. You know. Well, that's yeah. molding yeah. paste, not light molding paste though. I would do molding paste. I would do fiber paste, 
and then I would do the matte mediums, but just leave out okay. the light molding paste. Yeah. Okay. I probably could do with that one. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I spent a lot of time working on those, um, uh, uh, making the stencils and everything. Yeah. But I, I made a lot of them and I haven't really used them, but I put a lot of time into that right. and I don't, I, yeah. you know, maybe I just need to, but I tried printing with them. That didn't work. Yeah. Well, yeah. um, so well, can I, in our chat, we would, we can address that. Okay. 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 That's great. Yeah. Perfect. By the way, uh, those of you who are not in our chat, well, Kimberly knows about it. She's been part of it, but I have some openings. Uh, Mary and Betty, uh, you know, if you're interested, I have, um, there's a, a, an, a, a regular t every other Tuesday meeting, um, but less an hour where people show their work and it's not a critique as much as it is support and feedback from other people that I facilitate. So if you're looking for a place to, um, you know, kind of run ideas by and just have some support for a practice, mm -hmm. let me know. So anyway, um, but uh, it's a good place where you can try things and you can say, well, you know, what do you guys think about, you know, mm -hmm. does this work? But, the, you know, Katie, it's great, uh, great to have a, um, compilation of your own stencils because you will definitely find yeah. using those things those are yeah. really great to yeah. have yeah they always come in handy but the ones that we did with the molding paste so yeah. there's the relief on that and and i just you know to think about doing that for a final surface to work with too i wasn't <laughs> thinking that i was thinking i was making them to use as almost like a stamp but that's kind of uh. Do. it didn't so that's quite work also possible that's also possible so there's a yeah. lot you can do really it just goes on okay and... yeah it, it takes playing around with it right it does it does all right everybody well thank you if there's any 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 other thoughts any other questions nancy no i was just waving goodbye <laughs> oh, so okay. thank you <laughs> so to nancy here <laughs> all right everybody well, thank you so i much. really enjoyed seeing everyone's work that's yeah, it's it such great. a great part of these classes seeing what the people are doing yeah definitely well keep keep going and, and send me what you're working on i'd love to see you know uh just let me know if you um are... anyway thanks right. Andrea. thank you thank you Andrea. thanks a million goodbye bye, everyone bye bye, bye.